Hello. In this reaction, I'm going to talk about the chromic acid oxidation of alcohols, or sometimes referred to as the Jones oxidation of alcohols. Uh, in this reaction, the, the active oxidant is, is chromic acid. Uh, chromic acid looks like this. H2Cr for chromium, O4. Uh, but chromic acid doesn't actually exist uh, on its own. Um, and so it needs to be generated in a reaction. So for example, in the reaction of chromic, of, uh, chromic oxide and sulfuric acid, so this reaction will proceed and make chromic acid with, uh, well, water and, and sulfate and some other things as byproducts. build implied reaction, make it look pretty. There we go, all right. Uh, or, you know, other chromium sources. Other chromium sources can include like sodium dichromate in A2Cr207 or, or the potassium salt, potassium dichromate Cr207. Uh, and all of these things, they react with, uh, with sulfuric acid usually an aqueous solution, though there are some organic solvents that work to form chromic acid, which is the active oxidizing agent. Um, and this reaction is really, really cool because chromic acid is bright orange. Um, and so, uh, and it undergoes a color change as it does what it's going to do. Right? Uh, so just to, to look, uh, at the scope of the reaction. Uh, I'm not really gonna talk about the oxidation of methanol, though uh, chromic acid oxidizes methanol probably all the way to carbon dioxide. Uh, we're gonna look at primary alcohols and secondary alcohols. We're not gonna look at tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols don't get oxidized. So we have our primary alcohol and uh, use, uh, you know, let's use, let's use butanol. Uh, butanol will react with chromic acid, CrO3, and sulfuric acid. And we get butanoic acid. So uh, chromic acid oxidizes primary alcohols to carboxylic acids. It's actually oxidizing the, the primary alcohol to the aldehyde first. Um, oh, not indium and hydrogen. Uh, but under these conditions, the aldehyde is not capable of being isolated. That's what these brackets mean, cannot be isolated. Because the aldehyde is also uh, undergoes reactions with chromic acid to make carboxylic acids. If we have a secondary alcohol, let's do like cyclopentanol. Cyclopentanol will react with chromic acid type conditions to make a ketone. And ketones are generally a little bit harder to oxidize further, so once this has occurred, it's done. Uh, and you know, I said I said I wasn't going to, but it's just probably worth reminding that even though the Jones oxidation or the chromic acid oxidation is one of the more powerful oxidations available to alcohols, uh, tertiary alcohols don't react. So it's worth just taking this extra few seconds to, to put down a reminder that tertiary alcohols don't react. Tertiary going off screen there. There we go. I want to, uh, to show some part of the mechanism, not the whole mechanism. Generally, uh, this mechanism is a lot of proton transfer steps. Um, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol as my alcohol, and I'm going to show you... Uh, Let's look at the structure of how chromium or chromic acid. 
here's the structure of chromic acid. Um, and what happens, and I'm, this, this first step is what I'm not going to draw, uh, what I am not going to draw the arrows for. But our alcohol and chromic acid can react and form a chromic ester. which, because I, I mentioned the color of chromic acid, is, is still orange, not not orange. Oh my goodness. Orange. Uh, and then what happens next is that something in this reaction, perhaps the water that's formed in that step, uh, too many water molecules, so perhaps the water formed in that step can take this hydrogen here and do something that looks like a uh, elimination step across the carbon oxygen double bond. Let me exaggerate my oxygen chromium double bond a little bit. And now what we get, I want, and now we get our ketone. And instead of having chromic acid, we now have a chromus acid. Uh, looks like this. And chromic chromous acid is green, uh, and so as this reaction progresses, this returns to a brown brown first, probably because green and orange is brown. Um, so as the reaction proceeds, you'll see a nice color change that gives you an idea that something is going on. Um, I really just wanted to to briefly comment on why aldehydes may react further under these reaction conditions. Um, and in a later video, when I get to the reactions of aldehydes, uh, one of the key, one, one thing that aldehydes, uh, ketones can do this too, but uh, it's a little bit more of, an, more of a problem for aldehydes here, is that aldehydes in the presence of water and acid are in equilibrium with this thing called a hydrate. And now this hydrate has a hydrogen and an OH group on the same carbon. And so it can react with, uh, with chromic acid and undergo elimination to form the carboxylic acid. Now this explanation is probably not the entire story, but certainly uh, the presence of water in this reaction is part of the culprit for why overoxidation can occur. And in an upcoming video, I'll talk about a variation of this reaction that can occur in organic solution without water, uh, and it stops at the aldehyde. Thanks for watching.